Hey guys, I just wanted to come on for a few minutes and I thought it might be easier just to do this live than to try to um, do bunches of little videos. And I just wanna share something um, that happened this past weekend. Um, first of all, it's, it's kind of like a confession of an area of struggle for me. Um, we had our first miscarriage over two years ago, and that was about the time that um, we started the process of becoming licensed to do foster care. And what I have since realized in that journey um, of licensing and then um, having placements in our home was that I was having a hard time connecting with the children. Um, we've really only had two longer term placements, but I've had a harder time connecting. Sorry for the frizz today. It is like crazy raining out there. Um, but anyway, I just, I want to quickly kind of share, because I think this is an area that other people that maybe have um, lost or are going through grief may, um, can relate to. And it really didn't dawn on me what was going on until um, I read an article. So I read an article about um, from a mom that had had um, more than one miscarriage and then wound up getting pregnant. And as many moms know, once you've had a miscarriage, um, there's never a pregnancy that will ever happen again, that there's not this thought in the back of your mind of what could possibly happen. And just like for us with Lily, I mean, it, it really felt like once I did finally let my guard down and felt safe that everything was okay, um, we lost her. So that does something to a woman and causes her to not be able to just fully um, be joyful and happy throughout the pregnancy without that fear of something happening. And so, um, this mother, though, was writing about this, that, that this had happened and that she had made it through the pregnancy. And basically, her baby was almost four months old before she was really able to verbalize her love for her baby and feel like she could finally connect. And when I read that, I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, I mean, I know, obviously, what that feels like as far as the pregnancy is concerned, but to not connect with a newborn, I mean, that thought had not really entered my mind, like, it, that you would hold that back. But it's not really you holding it back. It's, it's fear. It's that thing inside of you that says, I do not want to be hurt again. What if this happens again? I can't handle this again. And so um, I made a connection. And the connection was, I have opened, uh, we, not I, my husband and I and our family have opened our home to foster um, children. And so in making that decision to open our home, we've also made the decision to open our home to DSS to come in and check out our situation and to check out our backgrounds and to check out our past and all these different things to make sure that we're fit to do this. We've opened our home to the families of these children who come in because we have to connect with them. We have to, um, you know, have a relationship with them. We've opened our home to, to a lot of things. Um, we've opened our home to the abuse and the trauma and the things that the children have experienced. We've allowed those things into our home in an effort to um, help. But what I was struggling with was being unable to connect. Um, we've had a child in our home that's uh, eight um, for, well, let me just share this. We've had him in our home since the weekend that we found out we were pregnant with Lily. It was Mother's Day weekend, um, and we brought him into our home, and he's been with us since, and I found out I was pregnant with Lily that same weekend. So as you can imagine, we've gone through a whole lot since he's been in our home, and so I was struggling. I was struggling to connect. I was struggling to let go and just love and to fall in love with a child that I knew from the moment he came was 
here temporarily. In his particular situation, we know that he's got a place that he's going and it will be good. And so um, I think subconsciously there's been something that's been holding me back saying, mm -mm, don't fall in love, don't get attached, don't let yourself get hurt again. And so um, once that realization came and really this past week, I have just been praying like, okay, Lord, number one, we're not going to do this anymore if I can't get past this because um, it's not fair. It's not fair to a child to um, not be able to connect. And, um, you know, yes, we're providing everything that's needed. You know, it, it, it's not that it's a bad situation. It's just not ideal either. And so I know, you know, I know that it's me. And um, so we were here by ourselves because my husband's gone on a mission trip. And last Saturday, I overheard a conversation. And, you know, the kids were being kids. I've, I've got the two littles, and they were doing their thing. And I heard them say something to our foster child of, you know, well, that wasn't nice or that was mean, something like that. But what I heard him say was, I know I'm stupid. And he ran into his room. And so I was like, okay, Lord, you know, how do I deal with this? Because um, there's, a, there's a hurt that needs to be dealt with, and I need to help deal with it. And so I took a few minutes, and fortunately the Lord provided some alone time. Um, where the girls were playing in their room and we could sit on the couch for a minute. And I was like, you know, who has said that to you? Um, he said, well, kids at school. I said, okay, well, well, we really don't care what kids at school say because you know what? They're the same age as you and they certainly don't have a degree and they are not qualified to tell you what is smart and what's not smart. So let's erase them from the equation. Has your teacher ever said that to you? Well, no. I said, well, has your mom ever said that to you? No. But there was someone, and I knew, I knew where this hurt came from. And so I, I asked the question if that person had ever said those words to him. And he, he said yes. And I said, well, you know what? We know that person was not nice. We know that person was not nice to you, and that person wasn't nice to people in your family. And so we have to let go of those words because those words are not truth and we're not going to let those words sit on us we're not going to let those words sit on our head and speak to us and so the first thing we did um we started saying i'm smart and over and over as loud as he could possibly say it we were screaming at the top of our lungs i am smart and then because i was afraid that that might not like resonate the way i need it to um, I had him start jumping up and down, like jumping up in the air as high as he could jump and saying, I am smart and landing. And so then I said, well, you know what? We might as well just deal with some other things. You're handsome too. And so we started saying that. And by this point, of course, the girls have come out of their room and they're like, what on earth is going on in this living room? I think my mama's done lost her mind. Um, and so they started jumping and hollering, I am smart. And they were hollering, I am handsome too, but I had to let them know, no, you're beautiful. So they were saying beautiful. And then I am nice. That was the other thing because our kids have gotten in a really bad habit of saying you're mean and you're mean. And that, you know, so we're trying to teach them that wasn't nice. What you did hurt my feelings and those kind of things instead of just pointing at the other person saying you're mean. So anyway, so that led to the conversation about joy. And as many of you know, joy is kind of on the radar for me this month. And I'm just going to call this the month of joy because I'm going to probably be sharing about this more. And um, we started about talking about joy and, and what joy means and how to have joy. And so one of the first things we talked about was forgiveness and that to have joy, we have to first have forgiveness. We have to let go of things that have hurt us in the past. And so we talked about this person that had hurt him, that had put these words on top of his head um, and in his heart because he had, he had believed it, you know, and um, that we had, to, we had to forgive him. And the, the illustration I made 
um, for him was I took one of the little girls and I had them come and stand next to me. And so I got their shirt and I got my shirt and I grabbed our shirts and I put it together and I was like, okay, so when we don't forgive someone, we have sewed that person to our side and that person is now stuck to us. And so we got up and we were like trying to walk as we're stuck together. And I said, you know, that um, means that that person is now coming with us everywhere we go. And so I spoke that person's name and I said, do you want to take him everywhere you go? And of course he's like, absolutely not. And I don't blame him because from what I've heard it, I wouldn't want to take him everywhere with me either. And so um, I said, so we got to forgive him. And so we spoke forgiveness and um, talked about that, you know, we might actually have to do this more than once because there's going to be times that things come up that's going to make us remember the hurt feelings that we have. And we're going to have to say again, I forgive you. And I said, but when we do that, when we forgive, then we have the ability to receive the joy and the peace and all the things that we really want to have in our life. And so as we were talking about joy, I was like, oh, I got to give this baby some joy. So we went and got the joy. And I put the joy on him um, on his back and things like that. And this is what's crazy. I mean, this was totally divine. Let me just share with y'all. I didn't come up with this. This was not some grand idea that I had. I just started speaking and God provided the words and that is what he will do. If you give him an opportunity and you yield your rights to what you think you're supposed to do or think you're supposed to say, and you just Yield it to him and say, God, please, I can't do this, but I know you can. And, and what he did was he broke something inside of me that had been holding me back from being able to share um, truth and love and life with this baby that has been put in my house. And then he also broke something in him by giving him truth. And so we put this on, and then guess what? Come on TV. If you've seen a Kohl's commercial lately for Christmas, it will say, give joy, get joy. And what was crazy is that, um, I got a baby that just got up from a nap, but she can come talk too. What's crazy is um, that resonated. And so now, of course, every time we see, what do we see on the Kohl's commercial now? Do you remember? Give joy, get joy. So... That is, that is the slogan or, um, hmm, I don't really like the word mantra, but that is, um, that's the theme. Ooh, Joy. Snacks. You want a fruit snack? We can do that. So. We're going to be talking more about joy. We're going to be talking about more about giving joy and how we get joy. And I just, I just wanted to share that with y'all because number one, maybe I'm not the only person who's had trouble um, connecting after a loss. Um, my child loves to touch that mall right there. Maybe I'm not the only person who um, just has struggled with joy. Um, Maybe I'm not the only person that has ever um, felt like, you know, um, everything feels like a struggle Don't sometimes. Yes. But um, I just hope maybe this will encourage someone. And if you have questions, please send me a, a message or um, comments or whatever. Um, I would love to hear from you. Thank you. I hope you guys have a great day.